It's 5.30 p.m. on a Thursday and it's still bright outside, which tells me we're pretty close to spring. As promised, I'm going to work on my propagation planter and one of the things that I have to do is to determine which plant goes where. I'm thinking that the larger rosettes would sit on this side, while the smaller ones, the younger plants, would be over at the far side. Now this is mainly a decision based on the amount of sunlight that they can get because the larger plants, the more mature plants, would need more sun. Before I finalize the arrangement of these plants, I think I would have to remove the plants on the mound at the back just so I'd feel that I accomplished something. <laughs> just look at this mess. Give me time and I'll clean it all up. Now, what am I going to do with this space? I'm thinking of planting a bunch of imbricata all around this bowl because I think this would give nice texture and contrast against the white bowl. I'm going to give them a bit of space because as you know, if you've been paying attention, my imbricata can grow quite large. So yeah. I was thinking of using some jelly beans to fill up the gaps between each of the imbricata here. But remember, the jelly beans over at that side were all stretching out. They were not getting enough sunlight. So I was thinking that maybe I should just overload on the imbricata and just remove them as they start to crowd. Besides, I've got lots of them. This is where I left off from yesterday. I was pulling out all the ground cover from that area and it resulted in this three planters full. I'm going to take cuttings out of them and move them to the planter. But before I do that, I'm going to work on this mound and plant in the imbricata that I just threw inside. I made a new batch of my soil mix because a lot of soil came out as I was pulling out the ground cover plants. So I'd need to replenish it. I'm planting them close together right now but as they grow they're going to be pushing into each other so what I'll do is to remove some of the ones that are being overwhelmed just to give them enough space and right now I just like to see them grow as a clump just a bit of a change from my usual planting pattern besides I have a whole lot of imbricata what to do with them eh? Now I just have to take this out of here. Yeah, nice. 
nice plants. <laughs> I'm about ready to start working here and I'm glad I left the stump in because Zach can see inside. Zach, what do you see here? What's this? Yes. Plant? Yes. I'm going to start working on this side. I'm going to put in the small sedums because they would need the most amount of shade. <laughs> Are you repeating what I'm saying? High five. Let's go. It's the last week of August, which means that it's the final week of winter. Next week is the official start of spring. And it's starting to feel a lot like spring. Not in terms of temperature, but in the length of day. It seems like sunset is now extending beyond 5 p.m. And down here in Melbourne, our sunsets usually extend all the way to 9 p.m. during the summer equinox. So you could only imagine how much fun that is for gardeners like us, having all those time to play in the garden. You might notice those orange flowers at the background. Those are actually succulents and let me show you. This is what they call pig face and the genus would be Carpobrotus. I'm not sure which specific species they are, but they are so lovely. As you can see, they have very bright orange inflorescence of flowers and this is not even all of them. There are still a lot more buds coming out and if you look closely, they are packed tight together. So you could imagine that a few weeks from now, to just be a carpet of orange. It's a pity that they only bloom in spring because otherwise for most of the year they are just this green but it's still nice to see that even for a few weeks they can be this vibrant. They're so lovely. All right this would be my little sedum space, little ground cover so not necessarily just sedums and in order to work here I would need to make some space so remove this ones first. I'm coming back with more of the sedums. Just went around looking for them. And there should be more from the cuttings that I just removed from the mound. So I'm going to place them here. Now before I start, I would need to mark the boundaries which I'm allowing them to grow into. So I'm thinking Cape Blanco goes there, sedum acre here. What's this name again? I can't remember. Yes, the Sidum das Phylum goes here, Sidum Makinoy, Tundra Tornado here, and the Crashula Tirsiflora right here, Little Missy over here. So it looks like it's shaping up to be a grid of threes. I'll go get the rest of the plants. I would need some sort of method or a way to mark out their territories, and I would have to use something that I have an abundance of. Which made me think this white pebbles. So I'm going to mark out the areas. And line it with pebbles. I'm using a soft liner like this pebbles. By soft I mean something that is temporary something that I can shift around and the reason for doing that is because I might want to expand them later on because after all these are ground cover so they might need more space for now I'm giving them a small space because I don't know the rate of their growth yet so consider this a testing and experimentation phase I have to see how fast they grow first before I decide on where to place them you know so let's do this for the rest of this down a bit less space for that you go here I think I'm ready to plant them now The current soil looks fairly water retentive, should be alright. 
I'm not going to replace it. So I'm keeping it here. The best way I find to transplant and integrate them into a landscape is just to mix the existing soil with your new soil. It's a great transition for them because if you leave them with the old soil, it has a different water retention level, maybe even different in terms of drainage. You want it to be as close as it can to your new soil, but at the same time, allow it to use some of the old soil just so it doesn't get exposed to completely different conditions that's how I would normally do that anyway section I'm going to plant some sedum blue feather it's this one's I seem to have two types one is a larger type I'm pretty sure this is also a rupestre but definitely not a blue feather I'll plant them side by side anyway so I went through this box and found more of these types there might be a bit more but if any it would just be tiny cuttings that have broken off so I'm going to stay with this I'm going to plant the larger types here and the smaller ones right here now you might probably be wondering why I even bother segregating them. I think it's better I do it now while I have the chance. Because once they grow and they propagate, I would like to be able to take the same type of plant from a single spot, you know, rather than going all over the place. I guess it's just the OCD in me speaking. <laughs> Next up would be harvesting this Petrosidum fosterianum. This is better known in Australia as Gold Mound and in some areas as Angelina. They are quite dense here now and some of them are even climbing up the wall. Next would be Sidum rubra tinctum and Sidum pachyphylum or the jelly beans. I'm pretty much satisfied with the planting of my ground covers and from here on out I think I'll just do a mixed planting since they are all rosettes and it would be easy to take them apart.
special thanks to my Patreon sponsors that's Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Gloria Ninotti, Camille Narvaez, Linda Leal, and everyone else who have pledged on Patreon. Your support have helped me build this. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss out on the next episodes of Let's Plant. Let's Plant comes out every Tuesday morning my time, that would be Monday evening Eastern Time. There's a recap every Saturday night, that would be Saturday morning Eastern Time. You could also check out my Instagram, that's at Seriska Page, and I post a photo on Echeveria every single day under the hashtag Daily Echeveria. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye! I made quite a mess.